Bionic Gloves presents the Hands-On Golf Podcast, bringing anatomy and hand function to the forefront of glove design to improve comfort, fit, and performance. Bionic is a division of Hilrick and Bradsby Company, makers of Louisville Slugger bats and ball gloves. Bionic gloves are the only gloves designed by a leading orthopedic hand surgeon, Dr. Jim Kleinert. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Bonnie Gloves Hands-On Golf Podcast. My name is Chaz Ra. I'm your host, and I'm here at the Crescent Hill Golf Course in Louisville, Kentucky, with my good friend. Well, I pay him to be my friend. Barry Bonifield, our PGA Pro for, for this episode. <laughs> They're getting funner as we uh, We're getting giddy now. We just have fun with you guys. Let's get right on this podcast, and this one comes in from Steve. And he says, um, I've been wearing the Bonnie Glove. Thank you very much for doing that. And his question is about reading the greens. He goes, um, I'm unfamiliar and with greens and I struggle to read them. What can you do to help? Good. Steve, great question. The reading of the greens is really where your scoring opportunities bear fruit. And it does take a while, but there are some tricks of the trade that you can do right now where you will see immediate dividends. That's what we'll cover here in just a moment. It's like a stock tip. You're going to get dividends off this podcast. Tell me where else you're going to get a golf podcast with dividends like this. This is going to be a, a really a good investment in your retirement. So, uh, so th- thank you for your uh, question there, Steve. And remember, uh, we're going to send you a glove as well. And if you'd like to participate, it's really easy. Send us a, a question to podcast at bonnetgloves.com, and you'll get one of these bad boys as well. Remember to send your question, your name, full mailing address, whether you're right or left-handed, and what size you wear. You do all that, and we use it. We'll send you one. It's that easy. Please leave your feedback on iTunes and YouTube. And with all that being said, let's go out on the green and see how we can read the greens. Read between the lines. Right? Right. Let's go get started with today's podcast. Okay, Steve, here we are out on Crescent Hill Golf Course, and we're going to talk about how to read greens. And probably the biggest thing, once a person has played golf just a little bit, you realize you can miss any putt of any length at any time. And you've got to be able to survey the topography that you're on as well as you can because this golf ball is on the ground the entire time. There may be a little bit of bouncing. There is not really any flight to speak of, but it's on the ground and the you have two criteria when it comes to putting and putting well and that's the speed of the ball and the direction of the ball. The speed is really the number one consideration But I find that for most people, the more aggressive the person is naturally, the more aggressive they tend to be in their putting. And the more passive or less aggressive that a person is in their everyday life, the more passive and more I don't want to make a mistake in their putting. So let me talk to you a little bit about this putt here at Crescent Hill. This green slopes from that direction downward here. So I'm putting back up the hill. This is going to be a slow putt because not only is it an uphill putt, but the grain on the grass is growing toward me. So you're not allowed to do this in tournament play, but when you're out practicing, you'll want to do this. You can just take your hand and push on the grass in whichever way. You can do it with your shoe. When I pull on the grass this way, it smooths it down. When I pull on the grass this direction, it roughs it up. Whichever way it roughs up, that's opposite the way the the, uh, grass is growing. So with that in mind, if I putt this ball and I see that the green is sloping this way, and I'm on the down side of that, this ball is going to be going uphill, and this grain on the green is growing toward me, so I'm putting against the grain, much like if you were to push on a man's face and against the grain of, of whiskers, you would feel that. And then the other way, nice and smooth. Same way on this green. Now, the sideway aspect is true also. This right side of the green here is higher than this left side. So this is not only going to be an uphill putt, it's going to be a right to left breaking putt. Here's a good rule of thumb. Most people play the ball too low. You need to play twice the amount of break you think you need. Play twice. So if I were to come up here and say, and point at this place on the green and say, I think the ball's going to break from here to there, then I actually want to start the ball over here. We'll just double that. Let me hit a putt for you. And I'm gonna try to play the ball about 
a foot out to the right of the hole. That's going to be my goal. So I line, I line my putter up over there. And then I'm going to try to start the ball on that line. And look, see how hard that ball broke? Didn't play enough break. So we're going to go ahead and double that amount. So I'm going to play this ball out quite a bit more to the right. And much better. That was on the high side of the hole. The putt can only be made if the ball comes into the hole from the high side and then it will find the hole, providing your speed is correct. What we don't want to do, once the ball gets on the low side of the hole, you will always miss. You might lip one in here and there, but it, it, that's total lucky. We want to be on the, on the high side of the hole. And ideally, your best putts, you will hit the ball a foot to a foot and a half past the hole, and that will allow the, the ball to manage any imperfections in the green. Now I'm going to walk over here to the right side of this hole just a little bit. And here I've got the green is still sloping this direction. The grain on the green is still sloping this direction. And so I'm going to pick out a spot right up here. And then if I get my speed right, we should find the hole. So I'm going to aim it right up there to the right of the hole. And there we go. Got the speed right that time got my direction right that time. The more aggressive you are, the more you can play it right at your target. The less aggressive you are, the higher you must play the ball on that break to get it to go into the hole from that high side. This is where you've got to go ahead and commit and, and realize you're probably not playing for your mortgage, so you don't have to be super, super serious about whether I play it a little bit too high or whether I hit it a little too hard. Go ahead and go for it and be aware that the higher you can play it in that break, there's more forgiveness on the high side, which we call the pro side. We appreciate all your support of Bionic Glove. For any more information, be sure to check with your PGA golf professional or continue checking out our Bionic Glove podcast. There's a lot of answers there. Thanks a lot, Steve.